Welcome to Mediocre Gaming, and today we're playing Deep Rock Galactic. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Zerl. Let's get to it. So today we're doing the Deep Dive, codenamed Glowing Raid. But before we get to that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to be notified of all future episodes as soon as they go live. So let's get into it. Stage 1 of the Deep Dive has Mactera Plague as a modifier, Mini Mules, and a full sabotage mission. So of course, uh, Mactera Plague means that there's going to be more flyers, so keep your eyes skyward, uh, relatively speaking, as you're going through this mission. And of course, uh, sabotage means that you've got that caretaker that you need to take out to get the data rack. And then the mini mules, you're gonna look for and listen for them. They'll pull screen and they will also ping when you are near and looking uh, in their direction. So kind of like a hot cold with the sound. Now, as you're repairing it, you are going to have enemies that are going to be popping up on you. So make sure that you're keeping an eye out for those. Now, since it's a sabotage mission, you have to take out the power plants before you can take out the caretaker. And you have to hook up the hack C bot uh, to the power plant. And if while you're hacking, uh, if they attack hack C, he'll disappear and then you'll have to restart it. You don't lose progress, but you won't gain progress during that time, as you saw. So just defend the point. You don't have to go looking for bugs. They're going to be coming for you and or Haxi. So just keep your eyes open for that. Now, once you get one of them done, you're going to have to do that again for the other one. Just follow the power lines uh, to where it needs to go and then drop the shield on the caretaker and it's time to take it out. Now, the caretaker goes through three phases. It, it goes through an immune phase, shielded phase, and then a damage phase. While it's shielded, it has these uh, tentacles that are trying to take you out either with a melee attack or with power blasts. You have to take out those rotating vents on the side. Occasionally, you'll have these shields that'll pop out uh, just like the turrets, but on a much larger scale. And if you see red uh, light around you, that means that at least one of these tentacles is targeting you. So you're going to want to move around and do the squiggly squid to keep them from attacking you. Depending on what job class you go into the deep dive with, uh, we'll change a little bit how you approach this fight. Not to mention what weapons and grenades you come with. Now the tentacles do respawn after a certain amount of time, so even if you take them out they will come back. Uh, so go ahead and take care of them if you have to. If they're not a problem, then don't worry about them because they will come back anyway. Once you get to the damage phase, you look for the glowing red eye and damage it as quickly as possible so that you can move on to the next phase. Uh, it goes immune, and then you have an increased threat level with each increasing level. So the first round, it's basically just the tentacles and the shields and, and that sort of thing. But then the second, you can have these sniper turrets, which will show up, or phase bombs, or uh, a bunch of shredders or patrol bots. So depending on how lucky or unlucky you are, you can have a more or less dangerous time while you're trying to take out the caretaker. And you're just gonna go rinse and repeat with this. Uh, take down the shields, uh, the vents as quickly as possible to take down the shield, and then move on to the damage phase. And then wait for the invulnerable state to pass uh, so that you can go ahead and take down the shields again and then just do that over again and if you're having trouble with one of the tentacles because it is the closest one or because it tends to 
focus on you versus minding its own business, then you might want to take it out. But it's up to you. But just know that like uh, sniper turrets, they're going to continue to respawn on a fixed schedule. So you need to uh, be aware of that. Make sure that you're taking them out uh, once they pop up at the beginning of the phase. But then again, if it takes you a little bit of time in order to take them out. And you want to do as much damage as quickly as possible uh, so that you can move on to the next phase, whether that is the second phase or third phase of the fight. And just know that at some point, the caretaker will go immune. And that's why you want to do damage as quickly as possible, because as soon as you start damaging uh, the caretaker during the damage phase, it's going to go immune uh, more quickly. Now the third phase you see that there are phase bombs, so you're gonna have to run around if you do get phase bombs. Uh, now luckily, whatever you had in the second phase uh, will not carry over to the third phase. And you can melee the tentacles back when they come after you. So depending on what you want to do, it could be easier or harder. Uh, but if you're able to focus solely on the vents, then you should be able to not have to worry as much about the shields. Uh, you might have to worry about one rounds of shields instead of two or three. The one positive about the shields is that uh, the tentacles or anything else uh, are going to have a harder time focusing on you because the shields work both ways. You can't shoot th through them, but neither can the enemies. Yeah, phase bombs are probably one of the worst ones to have uh, because wherever you are, it doesn't matter. They're going to be coming after you. And then you have to worry about tentacle respawns and then focusing on that vent and try and get that vent taken down so that you can move on to the damage phase quickly before more tentacles respawn, before phase bombs show up, etc. So here we go, do damage, it goes immune. Get out of the center to avoid the electricity. Now there's phase bombs. And now we're looking for... There we go. The open eye. And there were... There was electricity right about to happen. If you see those uh, electrodes popping up. Oh, and then it goes immune again. That's one of the things you have to be aware of. Is that uh, the further you are, the more times it's going to go immune. And there we go. Caretakers down, you can get the data rack, and then move on with the next mission. So this is a good time to point out that the Deep Dive is a three-stage raid-like environment where you can play by yourself with your buddy Bosco or with up to three other players, either pre-made or match-made. Just know that if you're playing solo, it will likely take you longer to finish the deep dive than if you are playing in a group. But your mileage may vary depending on the experience level of all involved. Drop pod has arrived. Retrieving the mule. Now, if you have an idea where the drop pod, drop pod is going to be at, you can follow the mule or you can make your own way back. With the sabotage mission, You've got a you know, one in three chance. Either it's going to be next to uh, one of the power stations or where you came into the deep dive. And just like that, we're at the drop pod, but it is just beyond our reach. 
Uh, luckily, we had a Rocky Mountain special brew before starting the deep dive, so it only takes one pickaxe swing in order to knock out terrain that's in our way. So if you're a driller, obviously, you can make your path very quickly, uh, but if, you're, if you've got the Rocky Mountain brew, then uh, it'll go fairly quickly as well. The only time the Rocky Mountain brew really doesn't help you is if you're in the sandblasted corridor. All right, so that's it for stage number one. Moving on to stage number two. All right, on the stage number two of the deep dive this time around, we have exploder infestation, mini mules, and a dreadnought. Now this time around, we've got a full salvage mission so we're going to have to do more than just take out uh, or repair the mini mules. Just like before, you're going to look for them and listen for them and repair them. Now the Dreadnought, of course, is the boss-like creature of Deep Rock Galactic. This time around, we got the Glyphid Dreadnought, which has an area of attack, a melee attack, fireball attack. And it can summon forth some swarmers to deal with you. Now, Exploder Infestation means that every so often you're going to get a spawn of several swarmers and they're going to come after you. So you're going to have to listen for uh, the spawn if it's close by and, of course, keeping your head moving so that they're not surprising you. Uh, although right before they explode, they do make a noise. So if you hear that uh, relatively close by, run to minimize the damage or not take any damage, depending on how quickly you act on that information. Now the Dreadnought, just like the Caretaker, has uh, three phases, has an immune phase, a shielded phase, and then a damage phase. Now you can only damage it from behind unless you have a weapon that penetrates, like the arms core or something like that. So immune, run away from it. Once the shield comes up, then go ahead and start doing damage on that uh, glowing bit on the back the exploders can come in handy sometimes as they will damage uh, enemies that are around them as they explode. And of course, they've got that, uh, since we're in the radiation zone, they do continual damage. Alright, so once you have the Dreadnought taken care of and the Mini Mules fixed, you can work on the next part, which of course is the uplink. It's a zone control. It's usually somewhere relatively close by where the derelict drop pod is. And you just have to stay within that bubble during that time. Now once the uplink is complete, then you'll have to do another zone control. This time refueling the drop pod. And the more people that are in the zone, the faster the progress goes, the fewer people, the slower it goes. And if nobody's in that sphere, uh, then you start losing progress rapidly. Going to keep your eyes open for any enemies, especially those exploders, which are going to be coming after you every so often. and take them out before they get into the zone. Uh, you know, they won't reduce the progress on your refueling or uplink, but they will try to take you out. If you die within the zone, it doesn't count as a body. There's a body within the zone, but you have to be moving. So if nobody's in there except for one dead body, one one down dwarf, then you're going to start losing progress, and you're going to start losing progress rapidly. Uh, keep your eyes open for any you know oppressors or detonators, 
as they are dangerous. Now you can see the progress going down very quickly. And then of course, we have to make up that progress and finish the refueling process. So somehow the fuel's only going into the drop pod when you're in the zone. If you leave the zone, then all of a sudden fuel is coming back out to the fuel pod. I'm not sure how that works, but that's kind of the way it seems. Now once you have it refueled, you're still not ready to go. You still have to wait 90 seconds, that's a minute and a half for the drop pod to power up. It's working on an old version of Windows or something. Which only makes sense, uh, since the dwarves are always complaining about how management needs to spring for new weapons and better equipment. So you can defend uh, the drop pod or you can run around uh, whatever makes most the most sense for you and your situation. If you've got more than enough ammo and health then no big deal. But if you are struggling and you need health and or ammo then you might want to run around. Uh, just know that once it starts getting close to zero you're going to want to be next to the drop pod because you only have a minute once the door opens before the drop pod leaves with or without you on there. So that minute and a half is almost like a warning. Say, hey, you need to get ready to go because we're not waiting around for you. Now this is a good time to point out that everything carries over from one stage to the next. That includes your ammo, health, grenades, traverse tools, everything including what's in your pockets. So if you're not able to put stuff into the drop pod, it'll carry over to the next mission. Just make sure that you drop it into the drop pod or the mule by the end of the third mission, just so you can get credit. So that's it for stage number two. Moving on to stage number three. All right, on to the third and final stage of the deep dive. This time around, we have no modifier, which is great. The Mactera Plague and the Exploder Infestation probably felt like it was wearing you down, wearing you out. This time around, we have more kite and mini mules. That's right, this week is all about the mini mules. And this time around, it's crystallized more kite. So you'll find that this third stage will likely go much much faster than the previous two stages as it's pretty straightforward. You get the mini mules repaired, you get the crystallized morkite into the mule, and then you can go. There's no extra steps in there that you have to worry about. And of course one of the big reasons to do the deep dive is for those matrix cores which will give you weapon skins, cosmetics, and weapon overclocks to level up your weapon damage. So unlike normal missions, uh, the deep dive doesn't have regional minerals. Uh, the only time you can get a regional mineral in a deep dive is if you happen to come across a hoarder. Otherwise, you can only get gold and nitra, and you want to be uh, keep your eyes open for gold and nitra, as gold will give you more credits at the end of the deep dive, and nitra will keep you flush with ammo and health during the deep dive. So both of them are very important, just for different reasons. But once you get the Morkite and the Minimules taken care of, it's time to go and finish off this deep dive. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on social media and thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time. Drop pod has arrived. Retrieving the mule. Drop pod departing in T minus five minutes. Head for the drop pod. Drone! Get to work! Platform's placed. One platform, ready to use. 
Me with the minerals here. Oh, I hate nature. Drop pod departing in T minus four minutes. Ready to be built. Armed and ready. Initiating launch sequence. Pot inbound. I ordered a resupply. Go, go, go. go. Supply drop has been ordered and is on the way. Oh. I ordered a resupply. Supplies are on the way. Resupply arrived. Go restock. Supply plot launched. Better stand back. Resupply ordered. Nitro has been withdrawn and supply pot is inbound. Rocket Retrieving here. escape pod. Enemy supply pod is here. Everybody collect ammunition. The resupply is here. Rock on! Thank you. 